What's up, YouTube? We back at it like a crack addict. <laughs> Again, for those that don't know us, we are owners of Countdown SA here in San Antonio. My name is James. I'm your boy RJ Garcia, man. So we're just going to give you a little tour, a little backstory of how we opened up the shop. I know last video that we got, y'all wanted to know how it was opening up a shop. So basically, we're going to explain the ins and outs of opening up a shop from basically from the ground up. So this is the guy that did all the behind the scenes work. So we're going to let him talk to y'all for a little bit. All right, man. So I got asked at a sneaker show the other day, like what made you do it? What made you like, what was your barrier in opening up a shop? And I simply told them as simple as this, it's like, we're definitely all resellers of the swoosh, but we never abide by the swoosh and we never just do it. You know what I'm saying? That's the hardest part is just taking that leap of faith and just doing it man so i'm not gonna lie to you it's not an easy thing to do but with that being said it's not the hardest neither it's time consuming it takes a lot of commitment it takes a lot of effort and a lot of uh being there especially are doing it for a business partner type of aspect if you are doing a, any type of partnership so the hardest part honestly was just doing it was just taking the risk i had just separated from the service this dude's still doing clinicals he's about to graduate get his bachelor's shout out to the homie for doing that but um UTSA, yeah sir utsa you say it's art UT utsa <laughs> utsa Birds up. we just decided just to do it um that was the hardest part there's a lot of things that go into it getting your llc um, getting your, your DBA, you're doing business as license, getting your EIN employee identification number established. And then now you are an entity or a business per se. And then you jump into commercial leasing, you jump into finding a spot to do it, finding a spot within budget, um, talking to all the lenders and everybody in between. All right, so somebody that's out there right now wanting to open up a sneaker shop, the best advice we can give you, like RJ said, is just do it. Don't be scared. There's going to be bumps on the road. Nothing's easy. If if it was easy opening up a sneaker shop, everybody would do it. It'd be hundreds of them. You everybody I mean? would do it. Here in San Antonio, there's probably five, six. Yeah. You know, we can count on, on our hands. Like Exactly. How, how many shops are here in San Antonio? Like I said, if, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. I promise you, we did not. Uh, we have over uh, 700 pairs of shoes here in shop right now, and it's not just us. We do consignment, we do uh, we do our buyouts. You know, we trade here and there. We got vintage in the shop. Like I said, we're gonna take you on a little tour around the shop of, you know, maybe RJ can put a before of how the shop looked, and then after. And I mean, we're still growing. I mean, we don't want to stay here. You know, we we want to franchise. You know, countdown out. You know. We want to do plenty of stuff with this shop. We just don't want to be here, you know, for the rest of our lives. Like, you know, like every sneaker shop, we, we want we want to grow. Keep in mm -hmm. mind, y'all, we've only been open for three months. And for us to do the numbers and perform as well as we have, that's really, really difficult to do. And it kind of caught us by surprise on how well we're doing right off the bat. So for three months, it's not bad, yo. In it's three months, we turned, we opened with 100 pairs. Maybe not even 100, like 80 to 90 pairs. About me 90 and him. pairs of shoes, yeah. And you'll see it on the screen. We'll, we'll post it on there. We opened the shop with 80 to 90 pairs, probably 100 pieces of vintage. You know, our grand opening was successful. We did sell some stuff, but in three months, hundred shoes so and people knock on the consignment aspect yeah. of things but don't don't disregard consignment y'all yeah I mean, don't don't let it fool you not every single shop has all the money in the world don't let it fool you everything in this shop is not ours not yeah. everything in this shop is ours I, I i'll be straight up with you and every shop you go to i promise you not everything is theirs either you, you people think you know you're walking into a shop you know the owners that are running the business they People walk in thinking like, oh, this is all theirs. No, it's not all theirs. I promise you it's not. They have investors. I'm sure they have in consigners. Like, don't let it fool you unless you're 2J's Kicks. For real? No, not even 2J's Kicks. 2J's Kicks does consignment too. He does too. consignment too. Obviously, he's that yeah. successful for a reason. And at the end of the day, we're helping other people make bread themselves. Yeah. People we've never broke bread with, we're allowing them to make relationships with us. And we're growing together. You know what I'm saying? We take our percentage, of course, but it's nothing even as astronomical as probably any other consignment shop might be taking from you we actually we like to make sure that our consignments eat just as much as we want to eat you know yeah, what i mean sure. um we put shoes on the wall we try to 
sell them you know what i mean we're not going to list them extravagantly freaking high we want to list all this stuff we want to sell this stuff we price it to move day. we price it to move but Absolutely. then again you got to remember you're walking into a sneaker shop you're walking into a resale shop so as owners we price accordingly we price you know stock x market sometimes we price it just a little bit under stock x market but then again we throw steals and deals here you know we're, we're always doing free stuff for the people as you can see in our previous videos you know we do free pop-ups here for everybody we don't ask literally a, free we don't ask a dime all we ask for is everybody to show up have a good time keep it clean outside and we have people that come in trying to give us money saying like you know what you helped us sell all this stuff because of your free pop-up here here's some you know 100 bucks 200 bucks and at the end of the day we say it all the time like this is free you know it helps us promotional wise like everybody that supports that certain vendor is coming out for that vendor but then they see our shop so they're walking into our shop so that's more customers coming in to our shop that we couldn't reach on a platform so doing stuff like that free stuff i mean i recommend it to shop owners out there if y'all are watching this video i mean do stuff for free like Get back to the community in yeah. some way or another because at the end of the day, the community is who you're going to get the most support exactly. from. Everybody wants to be 2Js. Everybody wants to be the common hype. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's all about who is there for the community, the communities who's walking into your shop. I wish some of y'all that are in over like different states come by and visit us one day and say what's up to us. Of course, we're not at that level yet. We understand that we've accepted that, but we want to grow and we want to do everything the right way, if yeah. you will. So consignment is not a bad thing. If you're planning to open up a shop, do not sleep on consignment. Why? Because for one, it helps you fill your walls. For two, it helps you eat without having to do the investment part of things. And then for three, you're allowing somebody else to eat with you. You know what I mean? You're building relationships. You never know where that door could lead you to another door with that person. They might be an electrician. You might, you might need to put lights up in this store one day. You know what I'm saying? So all those types of things, they might come into play. Um, watch our grand opening video. It's a couple videos prior to this one being posted. You'll see exactly where we started at. Like James said, 90 shoes. You don't need to spend 10K on inventory to open up a shop. We had 90 shoes and maybe 20 pieces of clothing. Our consigners already knew that we had potential. They knew they could invest in us. They knew this, that, and the other. And they decided to take that risk with us and trust in us to sell their stuff for them. And in turn, look at the walls today. You know, almost 700 pairs of shoes in here. Uh, so many pieces of clothing. Yes, we do vintage as well. Shout out DJ Hypnotic for being here throughout this journey as well. And um, his vintage aspect is allowing that world to e even clash with sneakers. Because yeah. that vintage he bring, world. He brings his vintage world into our sneaker world because I'm not going to lie, I've never worn vintage. I mean, look, I'm wearing vintage now because. I'm wearing we, vintage too. Yo, it's not we, just a faded shirt. Yo, we, it's vintage. We, we own a shop that's sneakers, streetwear, vintage, and a barbershop. Exactly. And we got a barbershop, guys. Uh, we have a, what do you call? Esthetician. We have that in the back as well. I mean, got there's Shelly in the back doing the brows. You know, there's what I'm so many aspects to a shop that you can do. Mind you, you're gonna have to get it. Um, what's it called? Um, like certified. A, you're certified to have all this in here. You can't just open up a shop. All right, I'm gonna have this, this, and this in here. Like, no. There's so many Things. loops and everything that we had to go through just to get this shop how we wanted it if you think about it countdown is basically we opened two shops in one you know we had to do everything required to do to open up a sneaker shop at the same time everything required to do to open up a barber shop so yes we had to check with our city we had to make sure that all of this in this area was authorized let's say you're shopping for a space you see next to a target i know that's not authorized because target doesn't like to have resellers affiliated with their shopping centers so just know that right off the bat so we had to find places that will allow us to set up a sneaker shop a resale shop at the same time places that also didn't already have a barber shop in the same area because a lot of lenders or a lot of leasing agents they don't like to have that in their commercial places multiple barber shops causing competition and, and and it'll be a conflict you know what i'm saying so a lot of those things yeah we wanted to be a small micro level 2j's kicks and also throw tattoos in the back that's the reason we don't have tattoo artists here today if we could we would shout out joel if we could we would but right here at this location, we have a middle school across the street. This location specifically on why we couldn't have tattoos back here. So all of that has to, has to do with it. Yeah, there's a barbershop just down the street. But with that being said, there's not one in the shopping center besides us. So that's why they are okay with it. So and a lot of things you have to take in consideration. Yeah. And you want to be different from these other shops. Like, yeah, you have shops that strictly are vintage, strictly are shoes. But we wanted to step outside that lane and... You know, we wanted to separate ourselves from everybody. Like, we do these free pop-ups. Um, 
I'm not saying other shops don't do it, but they might do it. But we started the free pop-ups, you know, we have the haircut uh, people on deck. We have the vintage, we have, you know, Chelly in the back. Like we have all that going on in here in one shop. Building, one yeah, one building. building yeah. So, I mean, it's endless opportunities when you get a shop, you know, you learn the ins and outs of how to run a shop. I mean, we're still learning. Exactly. I mean, we're, we just loaded our website up like three days ago. And we've been open for three months. Three months. Yeah. You know, we're all learning how to do everything as we go. You know, learning a, a POS, right? Not a piece of, you know what I'm saying? It, we're talking about a point of sale. You know, learning which which brand or which company to go with. Shopify, Clover, all of these things. A local company actually reached out to us and gave us the best offer. You know, so. We don't, we don't have anybody that's helping us like, all right, do this on this day. Do this. Like, we don't. We do everything ourselves. We we team up everybody in here. We mm -hmm. talk about what we want to do with the shop, and that's how we brainstorm. We don't ask and we don't look on who's doing stuff. I mean, we everybody has their own clientele. You know, at the end of the day, it's us. It's countdown in here that's brainstorming on all these ideas. And I mean, in three months, not bad. I, I'm proud. Yeah, for sure. Um, like like I said, I mean, we have to do everything from scratch, y'all. We're do, literally doing it from the ground up. We knew more or less how to run a business. We knew more or less how to manage it. But I'm talking about point pretty of much, sale, inventorying, we, you know, c tracking consignment, especially submitting much payouts. We knew how to resell. Yeah, for sure. We've been if, reselling for years. So. If you can resell, I promise you, you can run a shop. For real. Like I said, it takes that commitment, that commitment. Everyone has, has the, the, the want to open a shop, but when you do it and you're not committed to it, it's probably how most times the shop will fail. Yeah. You don't have the time, you know what I mean? Like, if, I'm not going to tell you if you're a full-time student or if you have a full-time job and you don't have your financial uh, stability, not opening a shop is a bad idea, but it definitely can be a difficult idea, you know what I mean? And we did so. this with no loans, nothing. This was all our money, no investors, nobody. Like, we opened up this shop with what we had like we've been doing it for how, how long do you say about 10 years i've been yeah we've been reselling for like 10 plus years so about you know 10 I mean? years so. i was more of a collector rj was more of a reseller i was one of those resellers though like, like you just resell to get the better shoe for yourself you know what yeah. i mean like i leveled up to get like red octobers back in the day and i ended up selling them to get something else you know what i mean it's all about the hunt in the resale game when you finally get something you're just like ah oh, i'm tired of it but i want something new so you just keep on flipping, keep on flipping. Some of y'all can relate, or some of y'all like this guy, they just keep loading up their closet with a bunch of heat, you know what I mean? So there's two different types of people, and that's when we met each other, and we just bumped heads and, and put two brains into one. And, yeah, he, he does things that are his strengths, and I do things that are my strengths. I help his weaknesses, he helps mine. It's like a relationship, yo, just we're and, not married, yo. And, <laughs> and you, you got to find the right business partner. Like, that's not going to happen overnight. You can nice. open up with your friend, and you're going to think it's going to work. It's not going to work. Like... You're just gonna. We bump heads a lot. For uh, real. You know, we're too pissing me off. We're we're not the perfect, you know, shop owners. Like we bump heads, probably every day. You know what For I mean? Real. But we, it's it's a brother, um, brother relationship. Love. Yeah, yeah brother it's a love. brother relationship. Like, yeah, we're friends, but I see this dude every day. Is basically my brother now. So it's pretty much, you know, opening it up with somebody that you know you can trust. You, yeah, you can trust. You know, you don't have to like we have cameras in shop. You know, we don't want to be looking at the cameras like, oh, did, you know, did RJ put the money in? Did did RJ pocket something? Did RJ take a shirt? Like, you don't want to open up with somebody like that. Same same with him. Like, he doesn't want to be looking at the cameras looking at me. You know what I mean? So, it's it all falls on trust and just opening it up with the right business partner. Absolutely. You you can't you can't expect one guy to do all the work so basically like you don't want to be doing all the work for example right before we started shooting this video i taught james how to load things on the yeah, website I, you know i, I didn't want to be solely responsible for strictly the website and everything i to am it, so. clueless and he knows i am clueless when it comes to technology like i have a phone that's it like this, this dude's I, a bot bro i'm clueless <laughs> clueless like on releases this dude's sending me links to go do the releases because like me personally like if I want something, I'm going to go pay resale for it. Trying to, you know, do all these raffles. When we first opened up the shop, he was taking me everywhere with him. I was learning the ins and outs. Like, I did the legwork. Yeah. Yeah. You saw he met all my plugs and everything me in between. Meeting all, and meeting all, you know, I had plugs when it came to resale stuff. I didn't have plugs for retail. Like, it's a whole different story. You know, it's always good to get retail stuff. I mean, it feels great. You know what I mean? But... I'd say, yeah, like like he says, it's pretty much just strengths. You know what I mean? Like he knew 
It, how do you say it's not what you know, it's who you know. He he knew the people. You know what I mean? He he knew where to go. Uh, yeah, and before this, I used to just buy anything and everything. That's why I'm stuck with a few shoes that I've had since the beginning of the year. But with that being said, he, that's where he came in and helped me be a little more wiser with what to buy. You know what I'm saying? I knew more or less at a show what I could sell something at. But at a shop, it's a whole different ball game. You know what I mean? Certain things do better at shows. Certain, th certain things do better at shops. But with that being said, when we're putting our money together, of course, I have to take his input in consideration as much as he has to take mine. You know what I'm saying? So get your, get your pen and notepad, though, because there's a few things I'm going to list right now about what you have to consider when opening up a shop. First things first, obviously, rent. We have taken consideration for this place, um, the rules and regulations, what you can and can't do with the place, because it doesn't belong to you unless you are flat out buying a, buying a whole building. You know what I'm saying? So if you're opening up a shop, Think about the shop itself, what you got to pay for. With that rent, it comes with the utility, you know what I'm saying, the water, the plumbing. Sometimes you have to pay gas if you have like a stove or whatever. Yeah, utility, like electricity bill. You know, it's different from a house. It's a bigger building, bigger space. Places on like 90% of the day, so you have to take that in consideration as well. And then another thing, we have very expensive things in here we want insured. You know, if you have to get a specific value type of insurance, it's going to cost you more than probably a vehicle. So a lot of things are in here that, that cost a lot of money. We want to make sure we're protected in case a thief wants to come in and, and take what's not theirs. You know, it's Christmas time around the corner, a bunch of Grinches out there, you know what I'm saying? So take all that consideration as well as surveillance. You know what I mean? Yeah, you have an insurance to back up everything, but how are they going to know you're telling the truth, what, what actually happened? Surveillance comes down to it. Make sure you're covered with surveillance, covered with security. If anybody tries to steal from you, you have it covered. Um, that's your backup. That's your lifeline. Invest in your shop. Yeah, invest in yourself, especially. Invest in your shop. Invest in yourself. So Also, the way you want your shop to look. We wanted our shop to look. We have grid wall all right here. So we have grid wall on this side, which is all our men's. And then we have that's all our youth and uh, our Yeezy section. And also, if you need racks, it just depends on how you want your shop to look. Everybody's shop is different. I don't think. Not one shop here in San Antonio looks the same. Everybody has their own taste. You want the old vintage style, you want the modern style. You know, it, it's totally up to you. Like, no shop is the same. I don't think anybody in San Antonio has grid wall all around. Yeah, for sure. Right? And you may yeah. ask, like, where do you get these types of things from? It's simple. Just research it yourself yeah. for one. Go on Google. Store su I know wall. store supply warehouse is where yeah. we got the majority of our things. You know, you can shop for like shopping bags. You can shop for display cases. You can shop for grid wall. You know, but of course, when it came down to hands and feet at work, shelving, you know, you shelving, know, hooks. paint, hooks. All I mean, not paint from <coughs> store supply, but you know, Home Depot. You yeah. know, get your shelves and stuff from IKEA. Just simple things. Start slow. My biggest expression, I should say, is just do it within your budget. Don't get in debt immediately and yeah. having to work your way back. So do it within your budget, live within your means. Um, you don't need 10 racks, you don't need 20 racks to start a business, I can tell you that now. All together, me and James probably put together <coughs> about 10-ish, give or take, but because that's why it looks as nice as it does now. Yeah. But honestly, if we did it the most minimal way, we could probably start a business with $1,000, if I'm being quite frank with you. And, and we were lucky too, because you know the lighting that we have, we went to go buy it, but it was the lighting that we wanted, and then my uncle, was the one that installed all the lighting throughout the... We Hispanic, we know people. Yeah, right? <laughs> so I'm pretty sure most of y'all know y'all's uncles, cousins, somebody. Somebody knows how to install something in a store. Exactly. You know, we were painting the back room, kind of messed it up a little bit. It's trash. So my dad, who used to be a professional painter, came in, did the whole shop, painted it, boom, one day. Paid him with beer. Paid him with beer. <laughs> my uncle did the lighting, you know, we paid him what you know what we can afford mind you you know we're, we're gonna give them some more stuff here and there um we went to ikea we got ikea racks and then that's all, that's all you need man yeah, just, you, just to get you, something on display you know as you make money as you start growing you start investing back into the company yeah. which is exactly what we're doing right now we're sitting in a in an area we plan to revamp by the end of the year we plan to put more racks around here and make the customer experience a lot easier. That's our biggest thing, customer service and the customer shopping experience. We want those two things to be money every single time. Why? Because I'm not in a mall, we're not in a mall, and people can't just stumble into our shop. No, people have to hear about us and come find us and come visit us. So we want to take advantage of every person that comes in, greet them at the door, welcome them, you know what I mean? If they need to try something on, work something out. Uh, we have the wet grass rug, which might not be here because 
uh, RIP Virgil. But with that being said, um, we have a, a try-on station. Make sure the shoes are still nice and crispy, even if they decide not to take them. You know, um, you name it. Our customer experience, our customer service is a one. It's like what we like to call it. So yeah, I, I promise you, I, we pride ourselves in customer service. We make sure every single customer that walks in that door is greeted like if we knew you if you're family it, it doesn't matter we we greet you how you want to be greeted like treat others the way you want to be treated that's that's the saying that that we go through exactly. you know what i mean so i mean just like like we said just open up the shop you don't need a lot of money you know open up with some friends you know it's it's easier i mean we, we don't pay all the rent you know we have help you know our barbers help us we have you know we, we don't pay everything you know but at the end of the day you know it does get expensive so open up a shop within your means your your budget make sure you know, it has enough space to accommodate everything you yeah. you have because mind we're getting you, to a point mind you you're you're going to grow once facts. you open up a shop you're going to grow we're getting to a point to where we have shoes from the floor to the ceiling in our stock room so we don't know what we're gonna do yet we might have to go through the ceiling or something you know what i mean no i'm just kidding it's but just, uh it's just crazy yeah. how three months from month one you know we were just excited with you know 90 shoes on the wall you know we didn't have that much of a selection now just meeting you know all our consigners and we have consigners you know that are young and that are old it's those consigners trust us in uh selling their shoes and you know we we have a system on how we get in contact how we sell the shoe you know if y'all ever want to get a video about that like how we do consignment in here we can do another video about that um, if you have any questions to set us up in the dms hit us up in the comment we like to like, interact go, interact with everybody because for one we just heard us express our customer service same thing goes with youtube i know we don't get the most following yet or whatever but we like to at least be involved with our followers we like to be involved with those that support us and we also support others who support us you know and before the video ends we'll give you one advice that helped us a lot stay marketing every single day market yours market yourself that is the hardest key aspect in this game so it, it's tough you know being not in a mall because in a mall you know you have hundreds of people in there no matter what somebody's gonna somebody's bound to walk through your shop or from you know in your shop out your shop walk walk right past it somebody's gonna see your shop here on the other hand you know we're not the busiest shop but we do get people in here and you want to market yourself so when we go to the mall we have flyers you know make flyers of your business put what you do on there you know your store logo talk to these people go to the mall we go to you know spurs games cowboys games utsa games you know any mall that you can think of restaurants we got stacks know. of flyers in our pockets that's the number. i have my four-year-old daughter helping me do that she i literally tell her hey hey baby girl go pass this off to this girl she's wearing or this guy she's wearing some nice shoes go tell them nice kicks follow our shop that's the number Boom. one rule number one advice we can give you is market yourself i can't stress that enough that if you're a small business go and market yourself even do if not, you have a boutique yeah, even if you're not even a sneaker shop any small business don't, marketing yo. don't be lazy do not be lazy pay for the small little promotions on ig pay for the small promotions on facebook stay you, active you know, with yeah. your instagram your facebook your TikTok. you know we, we're doing the youtube we're trying to stay active on that it's just i i can't stress it enough i mean market yourself i'm a yeah. I'm gonna say it until I'm blue. Say louder, market. market yourself. <laughs> All right, yeah, you heard it. You so, heard it, yo. So marketing is like the biggest, I think. That's the key factor. The in biggest. Oh, yeah. Like, factor. Forget about you know having shoes. Like even if you have 50 shoes, go and market yourself. If I have 5,000 shoes, but nobody knew about me, how are people gonna come in here to buy all 5,000 shoes? You know what I mean? Or even shop. So we had to market ourselves twice as hard than I would if I wasn't a mall. Um, we just have to get to that point one day where we're making it pretty well. We can upgrade in locations, but and, and hopefully that soon. And don't stress it. You know, your shop is not gonna, you know, boom overnight. You know, it's it's bound to happen. Yes, but it might take you know six months. It might take a year. It might take two years. Don't stress it. If you don't see your shop booming the way you think it should boom, don't. Um, be discouraged yeah don't be discouraged don't doubt yourself you know just keep grinding that's, that's another thing too if you have small 
a small business account with your Instagram, you're competing with a lot of other accounts yeah. that are doing the same exact thing. There's so, so many resellers. having a shop, having that shop, it's just like that backbone. People know that it's legit. Um, the city tells you you're legit. You know, people have a, a trustworthy place to go to. We even offer transactions that happen in shop because why we have surveillance, we have, you know what I mean, protection, all those things that benefit even people on, on the outside to come in and just conduct the transaction because why Basically back in safe, the day how, how, place. how did it used to be back in the day i know i used mm. to carry a backpack with the sneakers i'm fixing to sell ride my bike to a local waterburger and meet somebody inside of a, a local spot waterburger to do a transaction i why? would go to parks basketball parks oh uh, you're gonna die yeah exactly <laughs> late at night too I, I i'll be hooping like eight nine o'clock text a guy like hey i'm here right now if you want to meet me here and I yeah mean, that's that's sketchy yeah. it's, it's so sketch now that you know you think about it but yeah. we want to be that place here where you know even if you don't want to sell sell to us if you don't want to trade you know you can come here we authenticate yeah we do legit checks do for legit people checks. you know we're not like stock you know. x or gold or anybody but we know we know a thing or two doing this for like 10 plus years each so we know and more or less good too, if, smell you look bring, if you bring a shoe that you're trying to sell or trade we take tips buying, uh, you know if we have the shoe here we check it right there if you have that shoe and we have it you know it's it's easier for us i mean we've spotted so many fakes here in shop that one they try to bring us and they didn't know they were fake and we're telling them like these are fake um we've also helped one guy um he, some guy brought in some some shoes and said they were brand new and they weren't even brand new like if we didn't look at that shoe we probably would have bought two you know what i mean like we, we would have bought it brand new but you know, inspect your shoes, guys. I mean, do your do your um, research. Research on shoes. If if you don't know the shoe, YouTube it. Real versus fake. Simple as that. I mean, can't get easier than that. There's so many sources for you out there that are gonna help you build your knowledge on shoes. Build your knowledge on being a shop owner. Build your knowledge on you know the reselling. There's reselling tips out there, guys. The There's only thing preventing you from all of that is you. Is you. Yeah. Straight up. Did so, you? last last little pitch of advice. We all know how to resell the swoosh, but let's abide by it and just do it, y'all. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to hit us up. Slide in our DMs. You know, we have our personal DMs on there, too. Appreciate all the support up until this We're point. Growing. We We're growing. growing. Um, you see the progress, which is coming up next. We're going to give you a little walk around of the shop. You see what it looks like, you know. Just remember, um, it's always greener on the other side. Stay having faith in yourself, continue grinding, but at the end of the day, always be humble. Cool. In what way is it? It's the countdown way. Peace. <laughs>